Hi folks, it's me, Karen Money Williams, with another edition of Poop Hay Theater, in which a puppet or two, usually just one, because I mean, how many can you <laughs> deal with at a time, asks some questions or helps me define the teachings of Abraham Hicks, some of the terminology specifically. Now, I uh, enjoy the teachings so much, I've been immersed in them uh, 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 for more than 10 years. And life just gets better and better and better, I am here to say. And I just love to, I'm, no, I'm not official with this uh, in this capacity, but I just love to informally share what I have come to learn, or at least what I think I've come to learn. Okay, Tommy, come on in, let's get down to brass tacks. Hello, 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 Tommy. Uh, Tommy is my right-hand man, no pun intended, and um, so he helps me hold the, the signs up when we go through the, the new vocabulary words. And what we're doing is we're defining some of the terms that Abraham Hicks uses, because many of the words they use are in a very distinct way. And so our first uh, phrase today, uh, help me here, Tommy, it's the emotional guidance system. Now, if you listen to Abraham Hicks CDs or DVDs or even the old tapes, you will have heard that term many times. It, and we have actually referred to this in, in a previous episode when we talked about emotions. Do you at all uh, remember that, Sir Thomas? Well, I think I kind of do. Well, our emotions kind of tell us. If we're thinking along the lines of what's going to bring us good stuff and what isn't. Well, you've got the gist of it, sir. Abraham says that we do have this, this intricate, precise system, our emotional guidance system. And so when we feel a negative emotion, it's not necessarily saying, Oh, uh, don't go that way. Turn the car that way. Go uh, do something different. You're all way off base. It doesn't necessarily mean what we're doing is off base, but it does mean what we're thinking is a little bit off kilter. Our, our um, inner being, and, and we'll get to that term later on because we're doing this alphabetically, and I comes down the uh, alphabet a bit. Our inner being is actually, though, I will sneak ahead and say it is the part of us that is uh, our, our source, our our God self, our divine self, and it's within us. And so our inner being knows everything that we want. So when our inner being notices that we're thinking in ways that take us away from what we want, it sends us these little nudges in the form of emotion. So for instance, if you uh, were out in a storm and um, I was concerned and started to really worry about you and have all these <coughs> imaginings of you fallen plumb plop out of your nest, I would feel anxious and apprehensive, wouldn't you agree? Well, I would hope that you would feel that way. Well, I know you might hope that I would feel that way because that would indicate that I had a concern for you. However, that really wouldn't be the best way for me to think because when I'm thinking of you in trouble, um, my mind is going there and through law of attraction, I'm not helping you uh, be uh, safe and well. So. Uh, when I think of, of you or anybody or anything in trouble and feel fretful, I am actually have a, I'm projecting mentally some negative thoughts and, and fear thoughts. And those things are not something be, that I want to send out there because law of attraction will match, uh, in general, the thoughts that I think about habitually. Now, it's not just one little thought here and there that's going to make a difference, but over the long haul, if I think a lot of worried thoughts, then I am asking for Law of Attraction to give me more to worry about. Well, now that's a different way of looking at life. Well, do you remember when I said that this does sort of seem like an upside down and backwards way of looking at life? Um, so it is. It's very different. However, in my experience, it, it my experience has been that it's very valid. Let's go on to our second phrase for this segment. Help me out here, kiddo. Okay, it says going from Phoenix to San Diego via Yuma, Arizona, to be specific. Now, in in years past, not so much recently, but Abraham has used this analogy. 
um, like when they travel, they do travel around extensively in a motor coach called a monster bus. And when they uh, leave uh, and go from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, say, to San Diego, well, they're not going to get there instantly. And, and about halfway along, there is a t little town called Yuma, and there's not a whole lot to do in Yuma. And uh, so they often feel like, oh, I wish we weren't in Yuma. I wish we were at our destination. Well, we all feel that way about everything. I mean, can you think of something that you want and you don't have yet? Well, yes, I want my hatchlings to hatch out of those eggs. Of course you do. You're eager for it, and it hasn't happened yet. But what you don't want to do is get all frustrated and, and fly the coop and say, oh, well, and throw your wings in the air and say it's not going to happen. You know it's going to happen. It just takes some time. Well, the same when you go from Phoenix to San Diego via Yuma. The same when you are wanting to manifest a new job, a new uh, better health, the love of your life, any of that. You, it's, it's a step-by-step -step process and what many of us do is we change our thoughts and make our thoughts more positive but then we don't hold on quite long enough to get to our destination and we throw our hands in the air and say, oh, this positive thinking malarkey doesn't work and law of attraction doesn't work and it's a, a just a bunch of balderdash. So what we want to do when Abraham reminds us, okay, you're going to end up in Yuma sometimes and it might not be the most exciting place, but hold the vision, hold the vision. By the way, I am going to uh, one of these days create a bumper magnet that says hold the vision because it helps us to remember keep focused on what we want and don't throw up our wings or our hands and we will get to San Diego we will get those hatchlings we will get that wonderful romance or that new job or even a nice new house or car or a, a new idea about how to help the world that's it for now everybody Tommy say goodbye 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 everybody <laughs> okay, that was a little bird peck. Let's not get carried away. Okay, we will see you next time with some more words defining the terms of Abraham Hicks. And won't we have us a good time? <laughs>